Um, I'd be remiss if I did not ask you about this um, Chinese balloon that seems to be on some kind of a bizarre sightseeing tour um, around the United States. I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised that the Pentagon seems that the Pentagon seems so uh, casual about the fact that there's actually a Chinese spy balloon just kind of making its way around, looking at silos, looking at military bases. Um, but it's taking place in this broader context where there clearly are increasing calls and increasing militaristic discourse on the part of the West toward both Russia and China at the same time. There's clearly people who are saying we need to ramp up uh, and, and get ready for war with China. There was a general just this week, an American general, who said, I think it's highly likely that by 2025, the US and China will have a direct military war. And I wanna show you this insane video from this British MP, who's the chairman of the British Parliamentary Defense Committee, Tobias Elwood, who's a British Tory, who put on his Churchill costume and went on uh, British uh, television and was, listen to what he said. We need to face Russia directly. And let me let me start that again. Go ahead. We are now at war in Europe. We need to move to a war footing. We are involved in that. We've mobilized our procurement processes. We're gifting equipment. We need to face Russia directly and reckon, rather than leaving Ukraine to do all the work. Now, Michael, if I'm the Kremlin and I'm sitting there listening to somebody like this in that accent from Britain, say, let's go to war in Russia, like real war. Let's go have like a real war with them. I'm not exactly worried because this is what the British love to do. They really have nothing left, British elites, other than this kind of posturing. At the same time, the fact that it's just acceptable now, and you, we've had this from the beginning of this war, British, British generals and then Western pundits increasingly saying not that we should be in a proxy war, but a direct war with Russia over Ukraine, at the very same time, you now hear explicit statements saying we also need to head toward a war with Russia, with China, certainly a Cold War, maybe even a direct war, as this kind of Chinese balloon floats around the United States. What do you make of all of this? What is it that, that you think is the important takeaways from these events? Well, first of all, Tobias Elwood, that particular British MP, and I reported on this around in uh, April of last year, has been consistently trying to cook up schemes whereby the UK military would somehow lead the way in escalating the Ukraine war into a direct military confrontation with Russia. And then the US would be forced to follow along because the UK finally is, you know, uh, reliving its World War II glory and showing itself to be at the vanguard of like saving civilization or something. So that's been his uh, shtick for quite some time. But, you know, it's not just people rhetorically calling for some sort of confrontation with China. The U.S. published its nuclear posture review last October. And in that nuclear posture review, which is the Pentagon's statement of policy in terms of how the U.S. will be operating its nuclear arsenal and like under, under what circumstances the U.S. would actually deploy nuclear weapons, it says that the U.S. needs to have the capability to wage simultaneous nuclear war with two powers at the same time, without those being China and Russia. So there's actual governmental mechanisms coming into place to prepare for this you know, eventual confrontation. It's not just people kind of, you know, mouthing off about it on social media or cable news. Like there's an actual, um, you know, uh, policy mechanisms that are coming into place to prepare for this supposed eventuality. With the Chinese spy balloon, it's very strange because uh, Antony Blinken, the Secretary of State, just canceled what had been apparently his long planned trip to China where the Secretary of State has not visited since 2018, and he was going to meet directly with President Xi, and it was going to be at least somewhat indicative of like maybe a slight thaw in the relations between China and the U.S. after there had been peaks of tension over the course of the past several months, maybe maybe uh, culminating with Pelosi's um, uh, sort of... Uh, harebrained trip to Taiwan in August of last year. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, because of this emergence of this mysterious Chinese spy balloon, Blinken cancels the trip. 
which is odd in terms of like what diplomacy is supposed to be for. You would think that if this Chinese spy balloon was really such a grave encroachment upon American sovereignty, or was really a big problem in any respect, that that's exactly the time that you would want the top diplomat of the United States government to be going to China and to be broaching the issue and kind of coming to some sort of diplomatic resolution. But instead, he's now saying this warrants canceling the entire trip. It's very strange. The New York Times, in its just main account of this whole saga, says that according to Pentagon sources, this, there have been numerous instances in the past several years of sur surveillance balloons of this sort entering into American airspace or you know coming onto U.S. territory in some fashion. But what makes this different is that it, quote, has lingered for much longer than has happened in the past. So apparently that lingering effect or that excess lingering justifies you know totally just uh discarding any kind of diplomatic contact with china this supposed emerging superpower that we all need to be ready for nuclear war with and oh by the way is also you know tacitly providing support for russia i mean there's constant reports in the media even now about how the u.s is like warning china over and over for exporting potential technologies or other sorts of um, supplies or other sorts of resources to Russia for use in the war with Ukraine, even if the U.S. is not overtly making that accusation yet. Uh, clearly, the idea is that those two countries are increasingly wedded to one another and, you know, form this joint enemy behemoth that we all need to be orienting our political systems and societies around the need to combat. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update. Catch our full shows for free live weekdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on Rumble and join our Locals community at greenwall.locals.com for all of my written journalism, exclusive after-show Q&As, and more.